Okay, it's 4.30. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, roll call. Alder Heideman? Here. Uh, Alder Decker? Here. Uh, Alder Feldy is excused. Alder Athey is excused. And Alder Schelzer, I'm here. If we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we all know each other. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Um, okay, agenda item number five, approval of minutes for the January 24th meeting of 2024. Move to approve. Second. Great. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion is approved. Agenda item number six, general ordinance number 4023-24, an ordinance amending various provisions of the municipal code related to opening to open burning so as to create additional regulation of open burning within the city, including regulations allowing additional forms of open burning so long as forms are safe, approved by the fire department. Who wants this one? You want me to talk? Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. So <laughs> we're uh, extensive. it is extensive. I'm like, there's um, a lot of open burning somewhere. <laughs> so quite a bit of what this did was cleaning up some things that the city itself was actually doing, which weren't allowed by ordinance. Oh. So there is invasive species burning that happens up at Evergreen and Maywood. And under ordinance, that actually shouldn't have been allowed because that's considered open burning. Okay. So we added a section of prescribed burns. Okay. Um, and that allows for the intent of land restoration, which is what that is, getting rid of the invasive species. Okay. Um, the Glacier Lakes Conservatory, yep. mm -hmm. uh, they want to do some burning invasive well. species burning. So that would allow for that. Okay. The island in the river. Uh, which was underwater for several years, now is not, almost all the trees that are on there are ash and are dead. Right now, if they wanted to clean that up, their only option was to cut everything down, load it on a boat, take it off the island, and then get rid of it. So mm -hmm. this will allow them, they're surrounded by water, to, to burn. so they could burn it there. Cool. So really, it's just cleaning up what the city, largely what the city's been doing, mm -hmm. um, and then allowing it. It is not intended for the average citizen that has brush in their backyard to say, I okay. want to burn this. It's not intended for the average citizen to say, I have long grass in my backyard, I want to burn it. There's The permit itself is fairly extensive. Uh, it's a combination of what some other departments utilize. So it, it's not just a, hey, I'm going to be burning my backyard. And then for um, places like the island or for Evergreen or Lakeshore, they fill out like an application or? Yep, so okay. there, there's an application and I use, the city uses Santec Consulting to do the burns up at Maywood. Okay. And I actually used almost all of what they submit as documentation already mm -hmm. for the format for the permit. Got it. So it's including maps of the areas they're gonna be burning, mm -hmm. the personnel that they're gonna have there, the certifications of their personnel, the equipment, their backup plans, all that stuff. Okay, so then they just reach out to the fire department too? apply for that yep. or got yep. it? Yep. Great. Go ahead. Um, and then Joe. Um, no, I'm like the, the, no, the, for like the bonfires and stuff like that. No, this is, this does not limit like, I, I, I don't know how this is done in the past. I know that Lutheran High used to always have this big, massive one. I mean, is that still, you know? Still so big? that is another section in here that is addressed. So coincidentally, the Lutheran High one, their property uh, is partially in the town and partially in the city. So where they have their bonfire is technically the town and it's not even in the city. Okay. Um, but under this, that would be allowed. Okay. There was language in here that would allow larger bonfires similar to that, but okay. it was spelled out that it was only allowed at King Park. Okay. And that was added in there from my understanding years ago, South High used to have like a grand yeah. mm -hmm. bonfire. Okay. Um, so this expands that a little bit that it can be allowed, but adds those same stipulations of land restoration, number of adults, extinguishing capability, stuff like that. Okay. The other thing that this addresses is we had uh, when there was the, what was it called, Winterfest. Um, they held it at Fountain Park like two years where they did the oh, snowman yeah. building, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to have some small Fire campfires pits. there for marshmallow roasting and stuff. Sure. Technically, by ordinance, that wouldn't have been allowed either because there were 
areas in the parks ordinances that said no burning within the parks unless it was just in the grills. So it addresses that. Uh, there are still not fires allowed within the city parks unless it is part of a park rental or a special event permit for that park itself. So we shouldn't have and we won't have just errant bonfires going on in the city parks. Uh, the other thing that it addresses is just some changes in um, cooking. So right now, grills are not allowed above the first floor mm -hmm. of any structure. We added, we have all these beautiful apartment buildings that uh, are built under the newer standards that have sprinklers out on the decks mm -hmm. and patios, and they weren't allowed to do any sort of grilling. This allows them to have electric grills on there as long as they're sprinklered or it's entirely non-combustible materials. So it's a cement siding, it's all metal decks um, and framework for that. We still didn't want to get the gas girls up there because there's still the risk of people not maintaining them and grease fires. There's been plenty of fires across the country that occur from gas grills and charcoal grills being up on elevated surfaces. Um, the other thing that it does address is the newer patio heaters and the kind of fire pit tables that are propane fueled, um, allowing those in certain circumstances also, again, if they're done safely and within the manufacturer recommendations. Right. Thank you, Chairman. But right now you can't start a, a pile of brush in your backyard and burn that without permission from the fire department. Um, correct. You cannot. because And that is still not going to be allowed. Okay, burning of the lawns is not going to be allowed. Correct. Okay. That's, okay. Any of burning brush, that's all considered yard waste, and that's not allowed previously, and it's not allowed in this. Is, is there anything in there about burn barrels? Burn garbage? Yeah. Not allowed. I know it's not allowed. Okay. Right. So that is addressed when it talks about recreational fires. Oh, okay. um, that's It's spelled out. Clean wood, no furniture. Yeah. yeah. Between no, the hours, no rubbish, no construction materials. All that, all that stays the same, right? Yep. 12 p.m. to yep. 12 a.m. Yep. Or no fires. Yeah. Okay. And it doesn't affect the the ring size of the of the uh, back in when Latusky was the chief. They wanted to everybody had to come down. And they had to make their fire rings so much it can only be 17 inches or. I uh, know it's 36, still 36 inches. 36 so inches. More than the height shouldn't be more than 18 inches. Yeah. Yep, of that, the fire. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Of, of the materials being burned. Got it. Okay. I was like, how many? So the clean wood shouldn't be higher than 18 inches. Obviously, the fire could be a little bit bigger. But that language all stayed the same. Can I ask another question? How will this affect? Will this affect North Beach? I see there's some information here with the exception of the city installed rings located at T Land and North Beach. Nope. So that's saying that those can still be utilized. Got it. The, pre-installed rings on the beaches can still be utilized. And then on the 4th of July, they're still allowed to have fires on the beaches. That's the one day that they're allowed to have them on the beaches, not in the rings. As long as they don't excavate the fire site. As long as they what? Don't excavate the fire site. They can't dig down to have yeah. fires. So yeah. Right. Right. Oh. And they, again, can't be burning branches and garbage. They have to bring in their own clean I know wood. every summer in my district, I get a lot of phone calls about the fires in at D-Land. And just like how that, you know, it starts early right i think this past year it started or in 23 it started that summer in like may mm -hmm. you know towards the end when like every all the seniors had senioritis yep. and were ready to be done mm -hmm. you know they were starting to make fires and getting there early and then they started to like make their own pits and yeah they're only supposed to be within the rings that the city has installed such them. a hard thing to like also police because it's like I, f I feel kind of bad it's like either we add more or we've find a different option on how to do that for these students because it's like they there isn't a lot to do for that age between 13 and 20 here and so they're like having a bonfire on the beach and like being kids and it feels really hard to also be like don't do that because I'm also like come on they're only like that young once when they were when the rings were new we spent a lot of time doing enforcement down there and I think that really we only have that problem for like two weeks in the year yeah it's like those first two year, yep. two weeks of summer when they are really like itching to be down sure. yeah after that it slowed down but it was like those first two weeks I got a lot of phone calls and that would be a discussion probably with Joel 
occur. Let me just see if yeah. there is a need to add any additional ones. Yeah, like maybe it's just to start and then, you know, you take them off as the summer comes because more people are that are just using the beach for the beach as like a layout and a hangout versus those first two weeks. It's really just for no one's like hanging out at the beach all day because one, they're at school and two, it's cold. So they're just having the fires to like have a hangout at the end of the year before they all like go away and get jobs. And that's a good point. I'll bring it up with Joe. Okay. Any other questions? None. Great. Looking for a motion. Um, you wanted a motion to hold? Um, I'm no, sorry. It's only to hold if you wanted to make amendments. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm looking for a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. <laughs> Great. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It was aye. It is approved. Okay, agenda item number seven. Resolution number 151-2324. Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a clinical affiliation agreement between the Crafton Police Department and the City of Sheboygan Police Department for the purpose of education and clinical experience of the Grafton Fire Department paramedics. Yes, the agreements between the, the two municipalities, fire departments, not the police departments, just to clarify the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say police department? That's okay. Okay. Sorry, you're sitting in front of no, me. No, that's okay. <laughs> okay, do, uh, go ahead. Uh, it's essentially to allow the new paramedics that Grafton Fire Department has to come up here and get some additional experience, additional ride time with our department to get them additional training. We have the same medical director, so as far as scope of practice, um, license working under, it's the same exact protocols. It's just getting them some additional exposure to calls. Possibly adding to recruitment. Potentially, possibly. yes, potentially. <laughs> possibly poaching. <laughs> there is always that uh, potential, yes. I'm being recorded. <laughs> it just sounds like a training opportunity for the Grafton Fire Department that also benefits the city. That's yes. correct. I'm fine. Yeah. I will make a motion to approve. Second. Great. Um, any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Share votes aye. That is approved. Okay. Agenda item number eight. Resolution number 153-2324. A resolution authorizing acceptance of the 24 Wisconsin Bureau of Transportation Safety Bicycle and Pedestrian Enforcement Grant and establishing the appropriation of the 24 budget for the grants funds received. Okay, um, is this your and yours? This one's mine, yeah. Great. So I was here in May to, to this same uh, committee okay. uh, pitching the grant last year. So um, we, the, the state's offered us 25,000 this year. We We've gotten we got twenty thousand last year, fifteen thousand the year before. Um, we use it to to supplement pedestrian bicycle safety, right? We're oh, yeah, mostly right. mostly stopping vehicles that are that are engaged in the type of behaviors that are a danger to pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, I think it's a good complement with the DPW's uh, complete streets initiative. Uh, you know the, the 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 way we're pushing people to use more pedestrian and, and bicycle forms of transportation, um, and we use it. Uh, for various things last year, uh, we had uh, deployments out on Michigan Avenue at night because uh, there's a lot of people crossing the street. So, you know, making sure that cars are behaving themselves and the people are behaving themselves when they're when they're crossing the street. Uh, we had deployments out uh, around the farmers market, around the um, 11 amp series, uh, down at the lakefront for um, the the people that were gathering around the, the parking lots around Broughton Bro Drive, yeah. and you know, being disorderly with their vehicles. Um, you know, so things that are affecting actual safety and perceived safety on our streets. I am fully in support of this because it makes a big difference when your presence is there. I concur. I think it's really great. Uh, it's a good compliment to our complete streets program. And I really am highly support of this. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Is this, this is a, you got 20, 15, 20, 25. Uh, next year it'll be 30. <laughs> uh, you never know. Um, they, it, it all, I think it all depends on the pool of uh, departments that want the funds that that bots gets. Bots gets, I think, some grant funding from the from the federal government. And um, really, police departments have been really stressed the last couple of years, um, so they're not taking on a lot of the grants that because the officers are working overtime to fill staffing positions. Um, we've been able to to utilize some of this overtime to 
reduce overtime that we need on the on the streets because we'll say uh, we might have six officers working on second shift uh, where we'd want to have eight we'll take two overtime positions and, and have them go out and just do traffic do the work that we weren't able to do because of because of staffing levels uh, so there's been more money recently for that because a lot of departments have been turning it down um, and we've been readily accepting it and using it to the point where they're offering us more money so might be 30 next year do they do they track do you have to send numbers in to where you got the grant saying this is how many hours we use yep. and this and we've used it all up and, yes and we use it up tried to use it up before the year is over is so the, the grant period is may through october so last year we got the grants we got approval to apply for the grant in may uh, we rolled it out mid mid june and i think by the end of july we were we were like ten thousand ten thousand dollars into the grant already right. it's 25 percent match so we need to make sure that you know at, at some point through its grant period that we have you know 25 percent of those funds are going out with the resources we have focusing in the same area um but this year you know we i asked for the application early so i can get it here so we can utilize it strategically between may and october for when we need it yeah. the most gotcha. yeah, yeah. so rather than having to cram it all in in a two-month period we've got five months now to, to figure it out The only downside to this is the paperwork, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, with anything, there's there's sure. paperwork, but yeah. um, you know, there's we have we have uh, um, supervisors that sure. use this for development yeah. opportunities. They yeah. haven't they haven't uh, you know, done the paperwork, but they haven't managed their yeah. before. So that's right. Yeah. I move to approve. Second. Great. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Chair votes aye. That is approved. Agenda item number nine. Our next meeting date is February 28th, 2024. Looking for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Great. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Great. Meeting is adjourned at 447.